morning, everyone. Welcome to Lock and Load Stadium <laughs> here in Bellevue, Washington. I'm Will Hungerford, lead developer at Privateer Press. And finally, I get to do commentary with Jay Larson. I'm 20, so excited. 2014 Iron Gauntlet World <laughs> Champion, head of the Chain Attack podcast. Hain, head, Hain? Head of the Chain Attack Community Builders. Leader of Discount Games Incorporated. Beautiful human being. <laughs> Hello, Will. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited for you to be here. I'm excited for us to commentate on the IG semifinals. It's going to be a good time. Yeah, it's going to be so some good games. Let's go to the tables and see who we've got today. So it's uh, Mark Andra Andre? Andre LeBlanc. Mark Andre LeBlanc versus Jaden Iwasa. Now, they're playing two less popular casters. We don't see these two a lot. They've got Makeda 3 and Iona. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so especially, real especially in the Champions format, these are kind of some dark horse selections. Very dark horse. So let's go through their list real fast as deployment is beginning for Mark, who has the first turn. Okay, so Mark, he's playing Iona in the Devourer's Host. We have Iona with the Storm Raptor, a Gallows Grove, Mist Speaker, Night Witch, a Ravager Shaman, and then two units of Ravagers, both with the Command Attachment, then the Boil Master, a unit of Blood Weavers, Bridget and Call, and Lord of the Feast. So for Jaden, he's playing a Makeda 3 list with the theme list Imperial War Host. Mm -hmm. um, in that list, he has Marketh, the Hydra, yep. Moloch Karn, an Agonizer, a Basilisk Kriya, sure. the Siege Animantrix, Zadesh, mm -hmm. he's controlling a Gladiator, some Reptile Hounds, and then to close out the list, we have the Gobber Chef and the Pain Givers Min. Okay. Sounds good. Can we go? Uh, so... Jay, give us real fast sort of the, the TLDR version of what is the, the main tactic of each of these lists. So it's actually a pretty interesting matchup in my opinion mm -hmm. because first off we have Iona. She does lots of things really well. She's going to have a high defense on her Tharn. They're, one of the units is going to have tough no knockdown. Mm -hmm. um, she hits accurately. She hits hard. Um, and kind of countering that, we have Jaden playing the war host. Mm -hmm. and, and part of what's interesting with this is Makeda 3 has insight to help him hit better. And then he can also get Deathbringers out to give models in the battle group Grievous Wounds, uh, which will help fight some of that tough no knockdown because there's basically nothing more uh, soul crushing than getting to the point where you think you're going to kill a Tharn and then it, it makes a tough check and, and then heals back up. And heals back yeah, up. yeah, yeah. I, would, I wouldn't say soul crushing. I would say, you know, um, no, soul crushing is pretty right. Yeah, okay, that's, yeah. that's pretty yeah. much it. Yeah, it pretty much is. Yeah. So right now they're playing on uh, Spread the Net. Yeah. Uh, which is surviving into Steamroller 2019. Awesome. Yeah. It's a, it, you did a, a poll in the in the War Machine Facebook group yes. where you asked what everyone's favorite scenarios were and this was kind of the runaway it was the runaway top one winner and, and it was interesting because a lot of people were some of the comments were very baffled they were like yeah there the some people were like I hate this <laughs> scenario <laughs> how is this the most popular one but it was so, easily the most popular and yeah. people had really well reasoned arguments as to why yeah but here we see two zones uh, two rectangular zones can only be controlled by casters jacks beasts and battle engines. Uh, the central zone, which is, again, casters and uh, units. And then the two flags, which are casters and solos. So no objectives on the table. First to five, or first to five more than their opponent wins. And, of course, caster kill always uh, wins the game. So let's go ahead and make our early predictions. Caster kill, clock, or scenario? How's this game end? Uh, it's going to end on scenario. It's okay. my prediction. And who are you predict predicting will win? Um, this is the early hot take. We're boy. Just, we're just throwing it out there. Um, I'm going to go with... Jaden. Okay, going to go with Jaden. All right, I will go with Mark. Uh, not for any particular reason other than to just be contrarian. Okay. Yep. Uh, Twitch chat is asking, and by the way, we are uh, doing this live on Twitch and Facebook right now. If you're catching this later on YouTube, we do try to interact with the tw uh, chat as much as we can. So um, that is who we'll be talking to often. They're asking who the top eight is. The IG finals actually cut to the top four after yesterday. So we've got Jaden and Mark playing right now, and then it's uh, Matt uh, McWaters. Matt McWaters and Gregory Schott. Yeah. are playing on the other table. Yes. So we've got a circle. Which you and can actually kind of see there in the background them playing. They're playing on the troll fort uh, yeah. table. 
And uh, there is what they are fighting over, the, the title of world champion of War Machine of Horrors it, it, and the Iron Gauntlet. It always looks like the Iron Gauntlet is flipping me off. Well, that's just because <laughs> maybe that's the way your mind works. I, I look, mean, maybe. I look at it and see a sweet metal gauntlet. I don't see somebody trying to personally offend me. Jay? Uh, Windy Sells asks, is Jaden the only American in the top four? Yes. Uh, yes, that's correct. The, the other three are Canadians. Um, Merzane, what factions are they playing? Um, on the other table, Gregory's playing Scorn, and Matt McWaters is playing Retribution, I believe? Yes. Yep. Uh, no, no, it's... Uh, there's one Scorn, two Circle, and one Ret. Oh, okay. I thought he was sitting next to a tray, and so that was my assumption. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's Circle versus Ret on the other table. Okay. Circle versus what? Uh, Ret. Oh, is Gregory playing? Or No. I'll have to go look. <laughs> you know what? There was multiple little trays over there. I'm pretty sure. So, you're, you're the worst at this. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that Gregory's playing Scorn. You sure? No, but I'm pretty sure. Well, now we have to find out. <laughs> uh, I'm looking at Jeff Hanley. Jeff Hanley's going to run over to the other table and find out. Because they had multiple trays over there. I don't know what they were playing. Okay. Wendy Sells, Greg's playing Scorn, which I, it, that's what he played to win. The LVO, he's been playing that through this season running up here. Listen, he could have done a pump fake, I guess. He could have done a pump gonna fake. Have, we're going to have definitive answers here soon. We this will. This is great radio. <laughs> okay, the other table is Makeda 3 versus Ossian. Oh, so you're, like you're, I was telling you. What you're saying you. is I was right. No, I don't I remember it. Oh, okay. So, yeah, we've got Scorn, Scorn, Red Circle in the top four. Okay, great. So... Looks like the first turn is underway. Mark's got the first turn. A unit of... Let's go through the terrain real fast. and pull up this... Oh. Welcome to darkness, my friend. So we've got, obviously, large obstruction here. Obstacle. Well, hold on now. <laughs> We're just going to remove that for a second, everybody. We are looking at the infernal tower that is in the uh, the background here. That's part of uh, the table that Danny Sam's built. So basically, the idea is there's the four by four play space, and then there is sort of like a, a headboard at the end that is just purely scenic to make the uh, the table sort of come together and look badass. And because the infernals are releasing this year, we decided to celebrate their release by making this giant, you know, infernal invasion tower. It looks pretty sweet. He did yeah. a great job. I think it looks badass. We'll go through that terrain overview here in a second whenever the camera switches back over to the overhead, and it just did. All right, so do you believe this was a forest? They removed the trees. Yep. Got an obstruction, uh -huh. linear obstacle, a linear obstacle. I believe this is... Is it Burning Earth? Uh, um, no, the, I can see there's clouds here. These are... Looks like that's a cloud right there, and I'm going to pull the, the telestration off. We know that we have an acid pool over there. Yep. That's something we know. This is an acid pool. This is a forest. This is a forest. We've got a wall, wall, obstruction. This is a cloud. This is a cloud. And I believe that this might be either burning earth or rubble. Okay. And then you have here, this, this looks like it might be a train piece, but it's not. It's These the are flag. actually the, the two flags that we're going to be fighting over. Yeah. So he's, he's been running his stuff forward. I don't think that he's activated his caster yet, has he? No. And one more time while he's measuring, we can now see that this is clearly rubble. Okay. This is a rubble piece Obviously. because we see the little like rocky bits sticking out, right? Looks like he does have some buffs out. You'll notice that he has like some... Um, wires sticking up behind the models. Mm -hmm. So those are going to be for, on the Tharn, with Devourer's Host, the models are starting with a corpse. Yes. And then that's what the, on the uh, Boil Master, it has. Yeah. What Jay's talking about is like right here. Uh -huh. You see one right here. And then uh, over here on the Boil Master, he's talking about that right there. Go ahead and highlight his hand, which is, uh, <laughs> it's no longer down there, but he, he had a, that was kind of cute. He had a note on his hand that he'd written oh, what it say? to do ambush. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, yeah, this is, a, this is kind of a clever... <laughs> Here's some, some pro tips. Yeah, pro tips. Don't forget me. There you go. This is a... Oh, wait, there it is. There's the ambush. Ambush. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, this is just kind of a clever way to keep your corpse tokens without, you know, having... Too much Stacks of a clutter around, around here, yeah. especially in Devourer's Hearts when you've got so many of them. I've, I've seen some people who have 
the the beads are actually skulls and looks looks kind of cool. Oh yeah, awesome. So he's checking his threat range to the CJ and Man tracks. Uh, Turns out they can go a long ways. They can go a long ways. They've got a lot of shots they can put out. So one of the comments from Almighty Foon, he says that's a gorgeous raptor. Uh, I will agree. One of the things that uh, isn't on this matchup since Jaden uh, didn't play this list, mm -hmm. but I think in I think he has it in maybe the War Machine General group and probably also the the painting group. But there's a picture of he did his Supreme Guardian mm -hmm. that he freehanded a Japanese mural on the skirt. Oh my god! And it's amazing. That sounds awesome. You should like it has cherry blossoms. It has it's. It's dope. Jaden. <laughs> Good job, Jaden. That's great painting. <laughs> I'm happy for you. So, Will, one of the one of the common things that in in Twitter that requests that people had for me from when I, when I said that we were going to be doing our, our commentary together? Yes. So recently, you were on a, a Chain Attack podcast. If you, if you bring up any Dune memes. <laughs> and we, we did a, a dank Dune meme on, uh -huh. the, on, the, on the show. <sighs> yes. And you were very impressed by it. Oh, super. And one of the other things that... So there's two things that Josh loves almost as much as his children. Probably mm -hmm. more. Okay. But he just can't say that. Okay. One is dad jokes. Okay. And one is dank Dune memes. Okay. So... I've, I've got a combo here for you. Oh, God. <laughs> so. Now, this is great radio, folks. <laughs> so, Hungerford. Yes. Uh, what do you get when you cross Gaius Helen Moheim with a nun? What? Been a Jesuit. <laughs> I would, could you please, Tony, would you show Jay's <laughs> face real fast and how happy he is about all this? Uh, oh. This is what we're dealing with, everyone. Look at this man. Look at the joy in his face. It's the best thing ever. We never had player commentators on for a reason, and it's this. <laughs> never again. Never again, Tony. <laughs> uh, uh, we've, we've got a, a request here from Lord Randall for Jaden's list, so we can go over that again. Yeah. Um, so he has Makeda 3 in Imperial Warhost with Marketh, the Hydra, Moloch Karn, and Agonizer, a Basilisk Kriya. A Siege Animatrix. And then we have Zadesh 1. In his battle group, we have the Gladiator and Reptile Hound. Mm -hmm. And then the Gobber Chef and Ping Givers Min. Yep. Cheated Fate Joe. Yes, Dank Dune memes, Rickroll. <sighs> the people demand the Dank Dune memes. How can we deny them what they want? You can sometimes deny the people what they want because sometimes they don't know what's best for them. Oh. <laughs> uh, Hungerford, why did, why did the Sandworm? Across the dune. We, you said one. You said one. <laughs> to get to the other side. <sighs> so Jaden, Jaden's taking his turn. Yes. Jay Larson, commentator on the Iron Gauntlet. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he's deciding what to do. The sandworm has already activated <laughs> and gone forward. You mean the Hydra? Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> sandworm, Hydra. I figured you'd call the Razor. Shihalud. I figured you'd call the razor worm like a, a sand worm more than anything. Mm. A maker. Oh, is he using the extreme uh, gladiator? He is. Yeah, I think he is. Uh -huh. That is a beefy boy. So Jaden's plan this turn, I mean, he's got to be relatively, relatively conservative. Scoring doesn't start till you know, his second turn. But yeah, but I, I think that one of the things that... I, I talked about this in the other game that, that I commentated, and I think that going second has gotten a little bit of a, a bad rap undeservedly and I think that it can actually be a really strong play in yep. the right situations um, partially due to the excellent design that you've done with Steam oh, or Mr. Hungerford. Thank you very much Jay Larson. So what if I was in Jane's shoes what I would try to do is it's really important he can't afford to af to take an alpha strike really on this he wants to try to force his opponent to have to what he was in my opinion what he's probably going to try to do is force his opponent to come in and be contesting the zones mm -hmm. he's going to stay outside of his opponent's threat ranges right now and then mark is going to have to move in and kind of prevent 
Jaden from from being able to dominate the, the scoring starting on turn two. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's a way going second where you are able to kind of force your opponent to uh, offer you up an alpha strike. Yeah. I mean, so looking at the... What I expected, I expected actually the, the Hydra to come here and tow in, right? Like, the Raptor's not going to really get anything done, and then this, this, this Hydra is a massive threat to the block of, of Ravagers over here. Like yeah. That. And, and then it, it, for here, right, he probably just wants to hang out literally just right back, because this building is a huge, huge deal for the central zone, right? right? He's got time to sort of chill here and make sure that he's at least a little bit up there. What I'm interested to see is what he's going to commit down toward the flag. Right. And if you the the problem is if you're just contesting here, maybe taking this, maybe taking this, you know, Mark's gonna be able to do the same thing along his line. So where do you start making the push to actually get the pressure and start winning on scenario? Well, okay. one of the things that I think you're gonna likely see, so so first of all, this is this table is, is kind of a common dynamic that, that you see where you have the circular um, zone here and inside it you have a big line of sight blocking terrain going on in that zone and it makes it so that this is actually going to be the um, scoring element that is going to be the most difficult to score on out of all of them by and, far and the one that you're you're basically going to be able to likely just hide something out behind the the building and and just kind of contest and so the players really most of the action most of the interaction you're going to see going on here with the flag mm -hmm. and going on here with the zone and then you're going to see the same thing going on on the other side with the the flag over there and the zone over here. So, what I what I'm expecting you, is kind of what you mentioned there, Will. That with Jaden going second, his opponent has his models here, and he's going to have to decide what he's going to be able to move in here to. Uh, contest mm -hmm. this zone and, and this flag and whatever he moves in the, the kind of the unfortunate thing for him is that Jaden should be able to fairly trivially be able to it's clear get out this zone yeah right yeah it's gonna get mulched between a hydra and a titan gladiator right there so he's gonna kind of andre's mark andre is gonna have kind of the the tough decision of what am i gonna send in to to do that am i even gonna bother to mm -hmm. and then over on this side if if Jaden's able to uh get a get a solo in here mm -hmm. to score and if he's able to likely a reptile hound or something like that if he runs it in so that it is contesting the zone and contesting the flag mm -hmm. then Jaden's plan what he would like to see is be able to get up to two or three points mm -hmm. at the end of bottom of three yeah and that ends up putting a lot of pressure on Mark Andre so that he's having to score a bunch of points on his turn to catch up and then also start working on contesting the, the other zones and elements. Now, the one thing that Mark wrote on his hand that we need to also consider, though, is the ambushing unit he does that's true, have. That's yeah. true, yeah. And so I do feel that where that's going to be most relevant is probably going to be right here. Yeah. Uh, I feel there's going to be a key turn where he just comes in, and all they do is just run up here for no purpose other than to contest the zone and maybe get a little bit of uh, tempo in his, it's, his favor. There's also, if, if Jaden ends up making a, a placement mistake, which is, is can be fairly easy to do, mm -hmm. Um, then he might be able to get some charges off sure, and, and sure. get some damage in. So while uh, Jaden's just finishing out the rest of his turn, moving around, we're not seeing any attacks happening this turn. Uh, there was a question in the chat. We showed a bunch of Riot Quest models in the Riot Quest hangout here at Lock and Lillet A bunch of new things people hadn't seen before. One was a Scorn model, so it's apropos to this, this match. We showed the Terrorizer, which is a freed agonizer who has gone on a revenge mission. Uh, he has a bandana on. <laughs> he has a Morgul's glove, a scatter gun, a Praetorian sword, and a slug gun, and he's out to kill. So in Riot Quest, he's a super offensive, just super killy model who is, uh, uh, there's a lot of support pieces and, and almost MOBA style different classes in Riot Quest, and the Terrorizer in Riot Quest is definitely a, a DPS. He's just pure damage. People are asking about his War Machine rules. Uh, we've mentioned that he's a character light, or character uh, lesser. Oh, okay. Uh, and he has Rush. Oh, wow. So you're going That's to have, kind of a big deal. He is a seven-point model with Rush in scoring. Um, Trevor is going to lose his mind when he mm -hmm. hears this. He also has dual attack and makes four attacks. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, as one does. As one does. Okay. But his stats are still Agonizer, so. 
Cheers. So one of the, the questions from Richard Fredette, uh, what round of the Iron Gauntlet are we up to? This is round four. It's yep. the semifinals. Uh, we'll be commentating this game, and then next round is going to be the finals. And You'll be watching one of these players again, facing the winner of um, Greg and Matt. Matt, yep. yep. Uh, Hitty Cut Cole says, any Infernals? So... I believe that... They were not legal for this because it's champions, and the Infernals are not part of the ADR until yeah. starting next week. So Infernals were not legal for the Iron Gauntlet Finals. Right. Would have been really difficult to do as well. So we're, we're already seeing it. Here, here, come the, here comes the ambushing unit. And that is way earlier than I expected, to be honest. Yeah, I, I, I thought he was going to hold them for a while. I'm a little bit surprised as well. Because what's the plan here? Like, have them gum up the Hydra? But you can't really gum up a Hydra. Well, not with small base models. if he ends up doing it so that they are tying him up a little bit and he sets up behind there a the Tharns to come in and, and maybe try to charge in after that, then that's potentially a uh, an option that he might be considering. Sure, but I mean, if worst comes to worst, the spray... Uh, with the amount of sprays that thing can right. do, it's relatively safe. And, I mean, if he's in a really bad position, it could just trample away and then go kill all the Ravagers if they put this up in threat range. Then what, is he going to peace trade a, a Raptor into a Hydra with a Gladiator standing right there? It'll, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. That just, yeah. I, I am interested to see. Who'd you bet on winning? Jaden, right? Jaden, yeah. Okay, good. Are, are you wanting to change your side yet? No, not yet. Oh, okay. I, I have faith in uh, I have faith in all the players in the Iron Gauntlet. They're all great players. Yeah. I'm just taking Mark's side because you took Jaden's. I, I love the uh, that already you're like explaining away when you lose your lose your bet. Oh, I'm not. Jay, I will walk over and I will DQ Jaden right now. <laughs> and you know that I can do that. Do I? Yeah, I, I know you would do it. I'm not sure you can do it. Oh no, I can. <laughs> I could. I don't want to. Oh, okay. but if this this bet becomes more serious, I will do that. Now I'll get fired. Oh, okay, but some things are worth it. Right? Some things are worth it. Spite is always worth it. So you, I, I mentioned before that uh, it might be possible for them to be getting some charges in, and we're yep. seeing that right now. It's yep. going to be interesting to see how much damage the, these the, end up getting in yep. on the Hydra kind of going mainly into sort of the the back as much as he can and then it looks like is that the you're going to leave the unit leader back here keeping no it's code. probably not the unit leader who's um, that i'm it, guessing the what's what's going on here is we probably have the unit leader somewhere around here and then this one here is probably just a model that he's keeping out that hoping it's going to stay alive oh, so okay, that yeah. later on it can come run in and contest or control or got whatever got it got it got it It'll be interesting to see, like I said before, how much damage we, we end up see get put onto the seven points on the first one. That's pretty good. Pretty good start. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's what uh, casual thirteen dice off nine. Not dice off eight. Yeah, dice off eight. Um, if it was, it looked like there was thirteen on the dice, and they said seven damage would be. No, dice I thought off he six. did. He roll uh, five four. And I thought it was five six two. Was it five? Okay, maybe I misread the dice then. But I could be wrong. He did an amount of damage. Huh. Not a ton. One of the things that the. Hydra does have two abilities that can potentially be relevant. One is regeneration. It's, I don't think it's as likely to use this. It can be forced to remove a D3 plus 3. Yeah, but it's but got snacking, right? The other part it has is snacking. So yeah. if it yeah. boxes a living model, it can heal a D3 damage. And that's going to be relevant. Likely will come into play. I mean, the regeneration is really only good whenever you're missing an aspect and you need to force to heal it to get it back in... in Working order, so you can go do what you need to do. There's a piece of cardboard on the table. Yeah, he's using that as a proxy base right now to see where he needs to go to to get his uh, shots going off. Ah, a table marker. I see. I'm. I didn't see if the uh, Hydra got his animus up. I'm assuming that Sandstorm is active right now. 
Oh, wait, you know what? I bet the, uh, I'm sorry, the Hydra can't regenerate with snacking because he just got Grievous Wounds. I'm, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but... Oh, wait, they can't he be Grievous Wounds because he's a crazy one. He yeah, cannot dude, be Grievous Wounds. Correct. I am aware, and I remembered it as soon as I said it. <laughs> the second I said it, I was like, wait, they're immune. Wait a minute. You gotta remember that in, in Dev Brain and in early Mark III, they, were, they weren't immune, and we added it to them. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm... So I remember. I, re I remembered they had grievous wounds. Said that, and then remembered immediately afterwards that they were immune. Yeah, it all just came to me. You have in to a, have some sort of a flood special rule, like the Gremlin Swarm will stop healing on a colossal still. Yeah. Uh, real fast while they're thinking, Forge World says, "Can we get any spoilers on Doctor Stygius, one of the new Cephalix uh, Ryquest models we showed off?" Uh, yeah, he's one of the few models that can heal other models in Riot Quest, and uh, my design for him in War Machine is he is the first Cephalix Warcaster attachment, and he does have Spell Slave. Enjoy additional telekinesis from Exelon Texas. What if I don't enjoy that? You will. Oh. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure I would only enjoy that if I was playing. Well, then play it. It's great. Okay. He has other rules, too, but that's a really big one. But then I wouldn't be playing Infernals. Oh, that's true. You you went hard on Infernals. <laughs> Super hard on Infernals. Mazu HS asks, how about Chuck Dogwood? When's he going to release? Uh, Chuck Dogwood should be out later this year. That's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually <laughs> real. It happened. It's... Uh, the things the, the, that it's, it's a weird life, man. The inmates are running the asylum right now. And for those uh, while they're in the tank, uh, Chuck Dogwood grew out of Twitch chat. Basically, it was a name I threw out there one day to explain a narrative that was happening on a battle report, and then uh, Twitch chat took it and ran with it. So, uh, good job, Twitch chat. We we did it. We got there. He's okay, real. I, I have to thank Moore's one two seven for the question that the people want to know. Yeah, uh, are the Infernals going to be in Riot Quest? Not. At the moment, because the storyline of Riot Quest is the Infernals came, won, and left. Oh. So there are no Infernals coming at the moment for Riot Quest. Why well, I have to break my heart? I'm not, I said <laughs> at the moment. Okay, okay. I mean, I guess if you get enough loot, maybe they're going to need to do another raid. Or come, maybe, uh, maybe one got lost. Okay. One derpy little Infernal. Derpy, what? <laughs> he couldn't find his way out. We'll see. Uh... All right, so it looks like the Storm Raptor is finally committing to the move, and... It's going to get his shoot on. Yeah. One of the, so we're currently still on the top of two, and Mark andre he's at 42 minutes. He's, by the time his turn is done, mm -hmm. he's going to be... Probably around 36, 37 minutes. Yep, I was actually about to guess 35, because has he moved the, the south flank at all, the bottom flank? No, no he hasn't. He hasn't yet. So, um, and he's gonna have to, it's he's not, gonna, a, not, not where I'd want to be in his shoes. No, and he's definitely going to want to pre-measure uh, the distance to that CJ and Amantrax with all those moves that he's doing down there to make right. sure they don't get just blasted off the table. So that's, that's going to be another significant chunk of time. Looks like he's repositioning his, his Tharn now so that, um, as we said before, they can... I, I like how he's, let's do a little telestration here. Yep. He, he kind of has some, some waves of models so that uh, if, if something comes in and gets the front line, yeah. then, then these guys are going to be able to counterattack and deal a lot of damage under Iona's feet. Yes, yes, yes. So good, good positioning, good layering by Mark andre there. Got an over, overhead view now that... Isn't obstructed by the, the bird's wings, but we've got these uh, rows of, of stuff that can counterattack in now. Yeah. What I'm really, really interested to see is where the height, like if Jaden uses his models to clean that back line off the Hydra, so the Hydra can move up just a bit and sort of spray down the front line of Ravagers. Uh -huh. That still keeps it relatively safe, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. Got the boil master going. Yep. I'm not sure where exactly the Lord of the Feast is, but that's something that Jaden kind of has to always be a little bit um, concerned about. Although less so with with this list than some of the others potentially. Sure. Yeah. Makeda is a little little tougher. Yeah. He also has uh, at least a few shield guards for him to. 
potentially move around Lord of the Feast from the intended area. Yep. We see the Tharn Ravagers moving up, and Mark is measuring uh, distance to the flag, exactly four inches. Looks like, okay, yeah, so right, right here we have the, the Lady of the Feast. So that's, that's something that Jane's definitely going to be paying attention to. Yeah. Maybe gets into the pain givers at some point and just ruins their life. So, a question for you, Will. Mm -hmm. um, Mark Andre's playing the, the Lady of the Feast. Yes. Uh, what would you say is your favorite mini crate model? Uh, it's actually, <clears throat> so it's from the new Robert E. Howard line. It's from the Savage Mini Crate. Oh, okay. Uh, I am a big fan of fantasy and, okay. and sci-fi and grew up reading Conan and all those storylines. And when I found out we were going to be doing the Savage Mini Crate, I lost my damn mind. And the first thing I said was, is there a Conan? And the first answer, of course, was, of course we're doing Conan. And there's so many different ways you can do Conan. Yeah, the... the so my understanding is that the, the, the premium model, if you sign up for the six-month subscription, the, it's the VIP. is King Conan, the, the VIP model. It's the King Him Conan sitting on, on his throne. throne. Yes. And, that, and if Very that, sweet. As that line keeps going, I mean, I imagine we we'll probably will see more Conan. Oh, I would, I would hope so. Because if you've read the books, there's, you know, Conan's been a pirate. He's been a, a warrior. He's been a king. He's been the barbarian. He's been, a, you know, just a thief. Um, he's, he's all these things and more. But King Conan was a great choice, and I really just want that model I'm not going to use it in any game or anything. I just want to paint the model and have it. So we have a question that, that the people want to know the answer to, Will. Yes. I, I will try to say this word, but Andrews Karpidzinski, when will you nerf the Lord of the Feast? Uh, we might be toning a few models relatively soon. Uh, we have stated before that not all changes to the game will go through CID. Uh -huh. Some dynamic updates will happen that are just things we decide need to happen. Okay. Uh, we do have test groups that run things through that aren't necessarily the, the larger CID. Uh -huh, right. Because uh, CID, in my opinion, is best used to when it is a larger block. Okay. So individual models, not so necessary. Massive changes, like full-scale changes, the signal or noise ratio kind of gets out of control. Right, So yeah. that's why you didn't see the Theme Force Remix get CID, because it would have been literally everybody that plays Screaming anything. Screaming like, oh, my it, stuff has it, to be it's, it's too much awesome. The, the data input actually gets over, overloaded. But when we can do blocks like Tharn, Trenchers, stuff like that. For example, the Battle Engine CID, right. we should have just made those changes. Right. Like That was a CID, in my opinion, that didn't need to happen. Okay. So when will Lord of the Feast get toned? Possibly soon. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in internal testing, and expect this year to see a, a dynamic update uh, affecting a few models, both mainly positive changes, like things getting point drops and a few other uh, things becoming a little bit more viable, uh -huh. uh, that it was not going to go through CID. Okay. I Honestly, this, this was just my kind of speculation on things, but I had kind of been expecting that post lock and load, I was kind of expecting there would be a, a few tune-ups on some models, like potentially the Lord of Feast or whatever. Mm -hmm. But once you guys announced the the remix yes. of Theme Forces, that there was also the a part of me that was like, well, that's going to be a completely shake-up of the meta. Yes. And so... Uh, there's probably a dynamic update that will be close to that change as well. Uh, sure. That will change a few different things. So Cool. And and even with stuff, don't expect like a, a giant nerf hammer to smash into things and obliterate them. Okay. You know, like if Lord of the Feast went from range two on its sword to range one, that's kind of a big deal. Yeah, that if, is. If the Raven went from range 10 down to range eight, that's kind of a big deal. I'm not saying that those are what happened, but I'm saying expect that level okay. of, of, of changes. Things like that where it's not like, well, we need to make this model just be do, do something completely different. Uh, things that do something completely different, well, that to me feels more like CID level changes versus point values and small tweaks to existing numbers. So one of the, we're actually getting a, a view of it right now, but one of the, the models that Mark andre has right there is the, the Gatorman Boil Master. Mm -hmm. And one of the, as the community's talked, a lot of people have, have kind of been upset over the, the Boil Master giving corpses to non-faction models. Yep. Um, what's, what's, what was kind of the thinking behind doing that where it's, it's not something that has been very common 
uh, since Mark III? Uh, it depends. And when we were looking at the model, like, it, Mercs and Minions are often a strange thing. Sometimes there are Mercs and Minions that really shouldn't even be technically a Merc or a Minion because what they provide if you bring them in another faction is nothing. Okay, yeah. Right? Yeah, like yeah, their, yeah. their abilities yeah. are, like, say, faction, which only works for Merc or Minion. Therefore, they just don't do much. Uh, versus some that we specifically create because we know we're going to have a lot of these mechanics and instead of making a solo that does something similar for these factions when we want that to exist, we just create a Merc or Minion that they can't take as an option. And so we reviewed who all would be getting corpse tokens and what they could do with them and decided the Boil Master would be a good fit. And so that was a very conscious and intentional decision. Okay. And if it proves out to be too strong, obviously we keep an eye on everything. But right. it was not like a... Oh, oopsie doopsie. Yeah, it was, a, <laughs> it was instead of having to make a solo that does something similar for Tharn and a solo that does something similar for all these, these different factions, right? And then one that works within Gators when Barnabas 2 was coming out, right? Yeah, I mean, Listen, one, of, one of the things that I think was interesting is that when, um, at the start of Mark III, it seemed like there was kind of a, a pretty big shift where mercenary and minions you, you saw very little of in getting taken by... Signar or, yes. or some of the other factions. And it seems like that's changed a little bit with allowing your your one Merc unit, Merc solo in a theme list. Um, with theme remix, are we, what can people expect? Is, is that trend going to continue? Is it going to kind of stay at the level where it's at right now? I, it's, we wanted to not mess up people's current models in terms of what they would fit into the theme forces they've already invested in. Okay. So we were very careful to maintain that while changing the way the free points work to open up more list creativity and, and, and combining a few theme forces and, and changing uh, a few of the benefits where they needed to be changed. So expect the Merc solo unit thing to kind of work how it has before. Though in some places it, it has opened up and it allows you to actually take more Merc solos and units depending on the theme force. Okay. Like Disciples of Agony, for example. And what's going on there? Uh, I would want the language directly in front of me to say everything. I can tell you that it opened up to all Scorn Warlocks. It's not just oh, cool. the four. Great. Uh, and uh, like another example of something that opened up was you... Uh, I keep saying one of you say United Creels. The, the ranged uh, troll blood theme force, because there's been so many names for it in my head. Okay. Uh, which one is that? Uh, uh, I can't think of it off the top of my head. Is it United Creels? I can't think of it off the top of my head. See? We have the same problem. <laughs> anyway, that one used to be only... You could only take... Uh, uh, like ranged war beasts. Okay, yeah. Well, that's silly. Yeah, yeah. Just give them war beasts. So now they just take all the war beasts they want. So yeah, Krill Company. Krill Company. So Krill Company can just take war beasts now. Coming back to the, the telestration right here, um, you'll see that... I think. Don't quote me on that. This has been, been cleared out some. Um, some snacking has gone back, gone on. I'm assuming that you'll notice now that Jaden... Um, still has this hider kind of in the same place. I'm not expecting that. So there are multiple charges setting up. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out, but yeah. I'm guessing that this isn't going to be enough stuff to one round the, the hydra yet. So no, no. Not unless he rolls his pants off. If he rolls his pants off. Oh, well. So are you saying that all I had to do to kill a hydra was start taking my clothes off? No, roll your pants oh, off. Not oh. literally take your clothes off, Jay. <laughs> oh, it's oh. a saying. Oh, that, that must be some Louisiana thing. You never heard roll your pants off? I don't think so, no. Really? All right. <laughs> Tony, you've heard this, haven't you? <laughs> Tony's shaking his oh, head oh, yes oh, and yeah, no. Yeah. So, so, yeah, if you're Mark, what, what do you want to do, do here, Jay? Like, what, if what, I'm Mark or Jaden? If you're Mark. Like, if you're Mark and you're looking at Jaden's turn, where do you want to go from here? Um... So Jaden has succeeded in in clearing out that zone. Yeah. And so he's going to score that. I'm assuming he's going to get some sort of uh, solo or something over there to score a flag. So that's going to be two points. I'm assuming he's he, it's going to work kind of like we said before, although uh, looking at the Telestrator... Um, no, he's in contest range. He, he measured that earlier. That one's, that one's contesting. Yeah. So I'm assuming that... But That's going to be a prime target with the Animantrix. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he'll clear it off. Um, I mean, another possibility is we could have Mullet Karn come in and then have him uh, move back at the end of the, the activation. So sure. it's, it's kind of doing what I said before, where most likely at the end of this round, we're going to see Jaden scoring three points. 
he'll, I, I think, try to get something in here to contest yeah. so that Mark andre isn't scoring there. So if I'm Mark andre I'm, I'm down three to zero on points. Yeah. And at that point, it's going to be important. I, I don't think that that Jaden is going to have much stuff that is actually pushing very, very hard into here. And so Mark andre it's going to be important for him that, that he's going to score his own elements. So he'll, he'll end up, um, I, I've actually been, been saying this wrong on the flags. I think there's, do we have the, Which there like? isn't a, sorry, there isn't a flag going on over here. No, it's over by the cloud. Yeah. So it's not going to be, Going up by three, it's going to be going up by two. Well, hold on. Let's let me grab the telestration and look what we got going on here. So if we take the, this, so we've got this flag here, which we know is contested here. Right. Obviously, Mark Zone here is super contested. There's another flag here, which Mark has scored, but I think this model here, I can't tell if that's a reptile hound or not. Yeah, that's a reptile hound. So Jaden ran a reptile hound okay. to contest this flag. To contest flag. the flag there, yeah. So if this guy gets killed here, right, and the solo runs in, that's yep. one point here, another point here, and he's not getting this one. So it's probably going to be, like you said, 2-0. Two. Two yeah. But then if you're Mark from there, it's hard to not only score your own zones, but then meaningfully contest Jaden's right. zones on the following turn. I guess I didn't totally see was what it was that cleared the off the, the Hydra. Cleared off the uh, the Blood Weavers. That's what I was saying. I was wondering if one of those units back there or one of the solos was going to go in and kill him. And we kind of missed oh, it. Oh, that's what it... No, that, yeah, I'm not sure. It's okay. There's a lot going on. Sometimes we miss stuff. The Sometimes I'm so busy chatting with you about awesome Riot Quest stuff. Yeah. That or just like what's coming up with the Theme Force remix. Yeah. Here we see the Siege Animantrex is walking up and popping off some uh, shots. I do, this This is probably a little bit obvious to state, but I do expect to see uh, Iona's feet going off next round. And I... Oh, I God. Am, Hold on. The CJ Animatrix just shot the Storm Raptor to death. Wow. So, this was unexpected. Yes. <laughs> I, was, I was actually just about to say that I was surprised that he moved up the, the Hydra to do those sprays um, because I, I thought that it was going to spell the doom of the Hydra, but with the, the Storm Raptor going down between uh, the Hydra and, and the Siege Animatrix, that's, that's a really big deal for That is a huge Jayden. deal. That is a huge deal. I feel like, like yeah, Jaden has a massive advantage now, and and he was able to repo to get the Siege Animatrix to have its toe in on that back zone to prevent any uh, scoring back there. Yeah. That's pretty good. So now, literally, Mark's going to score zero on his turn. I think the zone might be clear now, too, so that, that Jaden might legitimately go up 3-0. Uh, um, I can't see if the Lady of the Feast got gibbed or not. She's out of the... So we've got the, the Lady of the Feast right here. Okay. Um, we'd have to see an, an overhead view to see if there's there's anything going on on the other side well, of the luckily, building. Our, Tony, our crack technical crew... No, there's nothing over there. Okay. Well. And if Makeda 3 is in the zone, right? I'm assuming that we've got Makeda 3 here with inside up, which yeah. is giving you the, the yeah. extra damage yeah. Yeah, yeah, on yeah. that, which makes the uh, dice not as uh, crazy versus the Storm Raptor. But that that is going to be putting a lot of pressure on, on Mark andre It... Um, it, it is a big deal for, for Jane to be able to be getting up uh, three points right now. Yeah, so no. that is that is Makeda there behind the no. the table. Now, the real question is, so right now he's got two for sure. He's got the center zone and the top zone. That bottom flag is still being contested by that Tharn down there. And he right. doesn't, doesn't have a solo next to it. So right now it's just 2-0 two, two is where the score will be. Right, yep. Yeah, there was part of me that was almost surprised that he didn't send in Moloch Karn to do that and then uh, walk away. Yeah. All right. We'll see what he's. We'll see what Jaden's doing. And uh, he, Jaden, 
so this this was obviously an important turn for him where he's gotten a lot of stuff done, but uh, he's also currently at 39 minutes, uh, which is also not qu quite where I would want to be on, on my second turn. Sure, yeah, yeah. I, I But it's, it's also not a turn that he could really afford to have mess any mistakes on. Agreed, agreed. I was about to say, it's, it's worth every minute as long as it doesn't cost him the game. All right, he clicks over. I believe the score goes up. Yeah, it's going to be two. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see how 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 bad the uh, reprisal. I mean, this this is, is going to be this is feet turn. 100%. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, obviously, right. And we'll see if the C Janomantrex and the Hydra both go down in one turn. Right. Which is like not unrealistic. Yeah, it's not. And then it's it, it is kind of interesting, like the the tides of battle, how it goes back and forth. If I think that if he charges in a bunch of stuff on to the Siege Animatrix, he Jaden has, has set up his uh, Mullet Karn to be able to go in there and and kind of mow up all the, the other stuff that's over there. Yeah. Um, I can't tell if, Mo if Makeda 3's entire uh, unit was in the zone. So what we'll do is we'll have somebody run over the table real fast and confirm that the center zone did actually get scored by having a, a unit completely in it and that the score is 2-0, not 1-0. I so. thought that you just had to have the Warcaster, not the whole unit. I can't, I, I, I can't see for sure where they're at right now. I can't, I can't tell where the models are 100%. Right. What I, was, what I was saying was I thought that if you have a Warcaster or a Warlock unit, I didn't think the other models had to be in there. Uh, that sounds right. <laughs> I'd have to double check the rules. Okay. So those models that were hanging back, one ran in, the other one to, to give the, the gang bonus, I believe. Um. So we just got confirmation zero the one. score okay. is actually 0 1. So it looks like, oh, you know what it is? It's not the center zone, it's the top zone. Let me pull up the telestrator. I see the model we were missing. Here's the Desert Hydra. Yeah. There's one of the Tharn. Those have already moved. They've charged in. I thought that I thought that all of the Tharn had been out, but one of them might have been towing yeah, the zone. Yeah, I, I think one of them might have still been back there, okay. right? Well, that's a pretty big swing. Uh, there's obviously a, a big difference. Between 2-0 to 1-0, yeah. yeah. Uh, one of the things that came out during the keynote was they were talking about how heals are being removed from the game. And so we've got a couple questions in chat about that. We'll be talking about that more on Privateer Stream later on. We have dedicated time to talk about it where we're not watching a good game. Okay. But uh, people are like, what about the models that, that spawn them? Well, there weren't a ton of models that spawned them, and there were definitely less models that interacted with elevation in terms of ignoring it. All of those models that had any rules specifically on elevation or hills will be addressed and will have rules replaced or upgraded in some way. Uh, you know, a good example is like, say somebody made an AoE that was a hill. Well, we might just have them make an AoE that gives a defensive bonus instead, or maybe gives them a defensive bonus and arcing fire if that's what we wanted. Uh, but uh, people aren't just going to flat out just lose rules. It will be addressed in some way. Okay. Uh, so I'm grabbing a cough drop. Mark Andre was was measuring something, and and we had a, a casualty of war. The uh, mullet car got tipped over, and now he's a proxy base uh, there next to the, the building. Yeah. Mark Andre just feeded. Yeah, I of believe course. I heard him say. Oh, of course. Yeah. That was for sure happening. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of Riot Quest demos at the show and running seminars and running narrative events, so my voice is kind of shot. So anybody listening to me, I apologize. I'm putting a cough drop in my mouth right now so I don't sound so gravelly and terrible. <laughs> Just don't slurp. <laughs> I never slurp. Okay. I'm a southern gentleman. <laughs> Why don't you have your cigarette right now then? <laughs> I stopped smoking years ago. <laughs> Jubby32, uh, we've seen this question multiple times in the, in the chat now. We need to get it finally answered. Can we get the new Gorman rules? Gorman Amad? Yes. Sure. His Riot Quest rules are he's a rogue class hero. Uh, he can move through enemy models, and if somebody equips gear to their hero and he shoots them with his alchemical sludge cannon, you destroy and break the gear and upgrades they put on him. So he's sort of a debuff character. Uh, 
That's all you were asking about, right? It was Riot Quest rules? Got it. You're good to go. We can go ahead and just as a little side note, whatever, throw in the, the War Machine rules too. Oh, sure. Yeah, well, he's got an alchemical sludge cannon that's a spray weapon that has three attack types. Uh, I won't give them all to you, but I'll tell you one of them is a Theric Blast, the one that removes clouds. Okay. Another one is going to obviously be corrosion-based. And when his original version hit the uh, blind bombs, we're not giving him blind spray. That'd be super dumb. Would it? But it would. Okay, okay. But he is getting a debilitating spray. So okay. he's going to have another kind of spray that has not a, an ability as strong as blind, but something that you want to hit a bunch of people with and will definitely ruin their day. I, I'm sorry. I was just kind of dumbstruck by what just happened. What happened? So Bridget and Call are charging in. And Mark Andre rolled 17 on the dice. Yes. Which was 16 damage on the CG Animatrix. Of course. Uh, I, I feel like its days are short for this world. It's not going to make it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's gone. And uh, he, he gets, a, gets a heart token. You know, rips the CG Animatrix heart out. It, okay. I mean, why not? I was, I'm, this is, in my opinion, some pretty good news for Marc-Andre because I, I'm assuming that he would have, uh, he likes the fact that he's not having to commit his, his Tharn unit there to uh, yes. have killed it. So And we'll go ahead and get the, the, the Telestrator going. So it, he's, it, he's ran over the solo over to Jaden's yes. flag. So that's going to score a point. These, this unit here, instead of having to charge in and potentially get counterattacked by Mullet Karn, my expectation is that this unit is going to withdraw a little bit and stay outside of the, the threat range of Mullet Karn and be kind of a, if, if he sends anything over here to be contesting this zone, to be contesting this flag, the Tharn are going to just be trying out. to deal with that. Yep. Now the big question this turn, I think, is does the Hydra uh, get sent screaming down to hell? Um, I'm, I'm going to guess yes. Because if those two both go down... That's a big swing. Uh, suddenly, my prediction of Mark winning this game becomes a lot more likely. Looks, looks a lot better. Looks a lot better. That's fair. It is interesting, though. I, I don't think that Jaden has yet used his feet. He's not. And so we can potentially see Makeda herself get a fair bit of work done. Yeah, just come Pac-Man through the line. Yeah. Okay, it looks like a free strike is happening from one of the Desert Hydras onto one of the Tharn because he kind of charged in the back. Of course, the tough check made the tough check. And then he um, rapid healed and triggered vengeance. Okay. Which that doesn't matter. <laughs> like, the, the, the vengeance doesn't matter at all. It is kind of cute, though. Yeah. <laughs> There's a question about the second narrative event that happened at Lock and Load. How did it go? Kador won both narrative events. In the first narrative event, the plane was crashed. In the second one, it was not, as Lord Carver got in the driver's seat and piloted it safely. We'll see how that actually <laughs> how that impacts the actual real fiction. But, so, but I can tell you that uh, that Kador won both events, which that will definitely matter for the fiction. Hmm. So. We do these narrative events leading up to this yes. with like huge numbers of people. Yes. Like giving the boot to Kador. Yes. And then we get to the, the narrative event here. Well, that, no, what they did work. So, Rivers, like, Lail, Kador's been kicked out. Okay. But this was the fight over whether or not. Over the, the airship. Over what they've been working on in secret in Lail the whole time. They had to abandon the factory in Merwin okay. and try and just get the airship out. I mean, I guess it's okay if, if Kador has an airship to start bombing the Infernals with. Sure. <laughs> or to fly away with. All right. Here come the the charge We're attacks. We're bringing it in. The so that Tharn, it's dice off that Tharn who did the tough check, he didn't get knocked down because of uh, Surefoot. Yeah, and so he continued on and is is going to try to finish off the deed. These are dice off six charge attacks, by the way. 
It's not bad. Uh, looks like dice off four. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, dice off four. Dice off four. Just a casual fourteen. No, it's dice off six because he rolled a six and okay. did no damage. Oh no, sorry. This the charges Multiple are attacks. the charges are dice off four. Right. The second attacks are dice off six. Yep. Buying with the corpses. Yeah. Yeah. Hydra's got six, six left. Six left. Not looking good. Dice off six on this roll. Does one to him? He's got two charges left here, so he's got five left. Oh. Miss, misses with a charge. Oh no, it doesn't miss. That kills him. They take the corpse out of the Hydra. It should spawn five corpses. <laughs> All right, so Jaden. And I don't think that Mark andre has anything that is going to be able to score uh, the other is a Kraya, zone. Right? Is a Kraya and I say Mark andre Oh, Mark andre sorry. Mark andre He basically just has the Storm Raptor and Iona that can score those. And so I don't think, I'm, I'm not too sure where Iona's at. But I... Is that her there? Yeah, that's her right there. Okay, so I think we have Iona here getting this zone, but Mark Andre is not going to be able to get this zone over here because he doesn't have anything that can score it. Correct. And that's the hard part of not running a ton of beasts, right? Or specifically that's running true. running one big beast. Yeah. It dies, and then suddenly two zones can only be scored by your caster. It is kind of interesting, though. I I'm kind of expecting for Jaden that. <laughs> When, we, when we're looking over here on this zone, Mark andre has so much stuff here that... And Jaden doesn't have a ton of stuff that can get over here to contest. He, he has Mulk Karn that can potentially get over there, but I, I don't just don't see it no. being able to charge in, etc. And so it feels like it's going to be a situation where on that zone where I own is at, that Mark andre is going to be able to start racking up points quickly. Right. Absolutely. So we, the Boil Master is going to move up and probably hand out corpses to somebody. Makes D3 corpses, makes three of them like a boss. I mean, it is a Gatorman model, so therefore they're known to be the best performers in the game. It is known. What? It is known. Yeah, it is 100%, known. 100%, 100%. Yeah. 100%. One of, one of my uh, things that I think would be really cool, so we, we know that from the keynote that after uh, Oblivion is done, we're yeah. going to be seeing some models coming from uh, for Convergence of Cirrus. Y'all are going to see some stuff that is going to blow your damn mind. And one of the things I would be kind of excited to see mm -hmm. is that we know that characters are going to be dying in... Stormbreak. Stormbreak. Yep. Uh, Kador has, has won the the narrative stuff on this part. They got the ship. Sure. Remember, they had three ships. They lost two of them. Okay. Which, by the way, just so happens to coincide with they lost the first two parts of the narrative. Right, right, right. They won the third one, which was the third and final ship. So they've got away with one ship. Okay. Well, if yeah. Nemo, per se, were to die, for yeah. example, yeah. him coming back as a convergence model, Nemo 4, would bring joy to my heart. Okay. Okay. What if he died and came back as a bug zapper? Um, Attached to Iron Mother's waist. I mean, like, I they, guess they, I'll, I'll take it whatever I can get. Yeah, let's get it with like <laughs> some real Black Mirror stuff. Like his consciousness is tra transformed into, you know, a bug zapper. And the convergence just hangs him up somewhere. And he just, he's got, his little tiny feet is working on mosquitoes. And he's like, I'm going to get you, but this is what I do for the rest of my <laughs> life. Kill me. And back to Jaden. So let's see. Jaden scores zero. Mark scores three. Score is now three to one. So the the places where he's scoring, going to the the telestrator again. Yeah, it's going to be flag flag zone. He got yeah, the top yeah, yeah. left flag, the bottom left flag, and then the bottom left uh, rectangular zone. So uh, right here, this was scored. This zone, and then the flag up here in the cloud was scored. Yes. So he doesn't have many uh, many beasts, but he does have his solos doing some work, getting them up 3-1. Yeah. yeah, so Iona does have a feat that gives 
armor. In addition to the strength. This is good on both ends. Yeah. I hear that's okay. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's no Sturgis 2, but it is like pretty solid. But who is? But who is Sturgis 2? So it's going to be interesting to see how Jaden responds to this. It, it feels like he's in a pretty difficult situation. I would expect him to be feeding this round, but it yeah. feels like he's might be struggling to have enough stuff to get work done with. Yep. Roughfoot asks if there's going to be any more casters. Well, there's a lot of new casters coming for a variety of factions. At the keynote, we talked about Riot Quest models that will also be casters in War Machine, like Helga on wheels, the new minion Warlock I design, the rules for. Is she and on a chariot? or She's on a motorcycle. Motorcycle. She's on a Pharaoh motorcycle. It looks like a, a tiny meat thresher, but it made into a motorcycle. Okay. And then at the Riot Quest Hangout, I announced that uh, Fiora the Forsaken, which is an unmasked Fiora that has been left behind, is basically the rapture occurred and everyone else left, and she's left behind at like the Midnight Temples, and there's no protectorate left. And so, when you're when you're dirty and infernalist, it kind of makes sense. Yeah. So she goes berserk. So it's unmasked Fiora running around in like a tattered ceremonial robe with a flaming chainsaw, trying to get revenge. <laughs> We have Harmonious Exaltation going on from Marketh onto Makeda. Yep. Gladiator is that. Ex the Extreme Gladiator was, was a little bit too big to go there. He gets so, rush out. So he's become a proxy model? Yeah. Question in Twitch chat is asking, where is Iona? So we're going to pull up the Telestration, and uh, I believe Iona moved... We'll get the, the, the side, the isometric view here in a moment. And I'll be able to show you. Iona is here. Bam. Found her. So Iona went like, so she was like, Pew! I'm out. So it's, it's kind of impressive that these models over here, uh, maybe this one got it. Probably not. Yeah, definitely not. Um, basically didn't have the... Uh, the help of the feet. Well, no, she was originally she was originally way further over, right? Right. But oh, she probably wasn't within uh, range, was she, at right. the time? Good freaking call, Jay Larson. That's why they pay me the big bucks. <laughs> no. A little confused on Twitch. She definitely did feet. She did feed last turn. And it did affect getting the... The CJ and the CJ got and killed. McCade is going to try to... He's going to be charging in and trying to uh, have some fun times. Uh, we have a list from Crix Noob. Does anyone know what Jaden's other list was? Uh, it was Zal 2, Exalted. It had two Supreme Guardians and then a bunch of Immortals. Yep. Kind of the standard one, right? His one, he, he had a Mammoth as his one and only War Beast. And then he brought, you know, Hakar, Ancestral Guardian, double Novitiates, double Immortals with the Command Attachment. Kind of the, the, the Exalted list you expect to see. Uh, we have a, a comment from Longy B Ball. If she, if she feeded, she then also moved at the end of the turn, so must not have feeded. Um, I think that we had the the wrong model previously uh, that we had marked as who we said she was. Mm -hmm. So I think that's more our issues. Our apologies. Yeah, that was probably call that had that we had maybe looked at before. Could be any number of things. Yeah. But that model there should should be Iona. Mm -hmm. So feed it, feed it early and then scoot it on over. So currently Makeda is Pac Manning her way through. Trying to Pac Man. She's currently on Seven Fury, I believe. 
I believe that Deathbringers is likely up, so Grievous Wounds is going on with no uh, yeah, tough. Yeah, pretty good counter to, uh, to Tharn Ravagers. be interesting to see how far this one go if, if this last Tharn ends up being the last one that she's able to kill. Yeah. So. Might end up trying to do a spell to go farther, maybe? Possibly, yeah. Possibly. Looks like this is is going on. He's he's going to be doing. Oh, and he's hitting the the Tharn uh, Bloodweaver that came in from the ambush right. way earlier in the game. Yep. So hits her with the blast, kills her. This is on an eliminator. Yeah. So eliminator. Immediately after this attack is resolved, the spellcaster can advance two inches for each enemy mall destroyed by the attack. Yep. He's going to be able to move four inches, yep. and will that will get him over into the other grouping of Tharn. Here you go, Makeda. Oh, hi. Welcome to the party. And it's kind of interesting. Um, it's it's going to make it so that both both players are very weak on each sl one yeah. side of the table. So It's made the game be a slobber knocker where they've just knocked the hell out of each other. Yeah, so basically over here... We're going to have Jaden that's, that's looking strong. Um, hopefully, I'm, I'm assuming he's hoping he's going to be able to clear out these models, get his caster on the flag, and get scoring that flag. Yeah. Uh, maybe have the Kraya, or I'm not sure if the Reptile Hound is still alive, but get that back here scoring that flag. And then he potentially has... I'm, I'm assuming he's not going to send in uh, Moloch Karn yet, um, but it, it makes it so that... We have over on this side, we have Jaden, who's looking strong. And then over on this side, we have uh, Mark andre who's looking strong. And so right. it's, it's going to be kind of a seesaw back and forth, seeing who can contest more, who can do, you know, those sort of things going yep. on. And then as predicted, he does move her over onto the flag with plenty of fury <laughs> yeah no she's good So Jane was checking on if he could potentially eliminate her multiple times a turn. Yeah, the answer is, is yes. yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you can you can go to Narnia and back if you want. Who doesn't? Uh, who doesn't want to go to Narnia? <laughs> Somebody in Twitch chat says the Hydra's just sort of hanging on the edge of the table up there. He's dead, Jim. Well, yeah, no, but they're just worried he's going to go flying. Oh yeah, it's, it's oh. literally there's a seesaw, right? Marjorie Daw and. Danger zone. <laughs> what are you doing? Nothing. We see Travis Marg is judging the table right now. So we do. Yeah, you can see going on behind with, uh, on Jaden's side of the table is mm -hmm. Matt McWaters. And leading over there behind uh, Travis Marg, we have Gregory Schott. Yep. Yep. Korea does go over, get into the zone, end up getting... Uh, so there's Being a little, able to score that. There's a little Twitch chat confusion about whether or not Iona feed it. And we definitely heard Mark say that, that it was. But maybe there was something where we misheard through our, our headphones that she didn't feed. Because we heard him say feeding. But maybe we were talking. 
then he said, I'm feeding. And then, and then said, we wait. And then said, and maybe he was like in the same activation. Go, no, I'm deciding I'm not feeding. Sure, yeah, yeah. So we're going to get a confirmation real fast of whether or not she feeded. You know, Tony, our sideline reporter. Cool. Also in commentary, we just have a mic at the table so we can hear sort of the, the noise in the background and we're trying to follow along with what's going on. Iona has not feeded. So we got confirmation that Iona so has OMG. not feeded. Feet is not up. Feet was not used. Interesting. Musa HSC. Yes, we're bad. <laughs> You're good. So the Hydra got taken out and the Seedra Magic got, got taken out so quickly without just, feet. Just, just casual circle things. Yeah, just casual circle things. <laughs> so that means the feet's still available. And again, at, at one point through the, the mic, Mark definitely said, like, Yo, yeah, feet. Yeah, feet, right? But right. but we must have missed the rest of it because of the noise. So on our end, you know, that that stuff happens. Our apologies to all of you. You know, mistakes happen. It's going to be interesting to see what Jaden does to try to contest So we're, we're currently having the discussion we just had, uh, whether or not the Makeda is currently on the flag. But if her unit's not, they're looking up the rules in Steamroller right now, yeah. which exists in there. What has to happen whenever a caster unit is involved? So they're pulling, they've paused the clock, they're pulling up the Steamroller rules, and we'll let them look it up at the moment. And I'm not sure currently what this model is. But I believe it's the model that Jaden set in to contest that flag. Yeah. So we, we know that for sure Mark Andre is going to score this zone. <laughs> going to switch, switch views. So we know that uh, Mark Andre is scoring here. This one, this flag has been blocked. Uh, by that model here. Yeah. And then Jaden is scoring here. Yeah. And Jaden is not scoring the flag because all members of the unit have to be within four. And this one is not being scored. Yep. So, so they, the score is one, they each gained one. Each gained one. So big, tr big turn of events. So the score should be 4 2. Also, real fast, while we still have that top view up, oh, wait, Tony's pressing buttons. Tony, Tony slapped, Tony slapped my hand just now as I was trying to use the Telestrator so he could change the numbers of four and two. You are an evil overseer, Tony. <laughs> I was just trying to... So, yeah, what happened is Makeda's here, but I believe the... Uh, Exalted Court is... They're, like, down they here. They got a little bit left behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, real fast, I want to point out this Blair Witch symbol <laughs> that has just sort of been created, <laughs> right, by Mark. So he's dropping a little voodoo on the table to make sure that he uh, he secures that that win. I mean, gotta do what it takes to win. I guess so, man. <laughs> it's serious business. So let's let's do a little telestration again. Try to to game out what Mark Andre is going to be looking at this turn. Yes. Obviously, he wants to uh, get that removed. That's going to have him score two points. Uh, he'd probably like to get something over here to contest there. Uh, he's likely not going to be able to, I mean, he's just not going to be able to no. get this cleared out. So he's not going to uh, be able to score this circular zone. But if he manages to score these two elements and he, I, he, he's not going to be able to. Wait, to, hold on. I got to call this real fast. Okay. Iona has feeded. We, we've heard it said, but this could be a pump fake though. No, he said it. I know. And this time he put the token down. Okay. Iona has feeded. All right. Sorry. Didn't mean to interrupt. No, but basically we're, we're gonna we're gonna see Mark Andre is going to end up going up fairly easily. I think being at six control points to two. Oh, and oh. looks like because Makeda doesn't contest the flag. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so with Makeda not contesting the, the flag, that is yep. absolutely the game. So uh, I think. Jaden think he was going to score that point and then right. not scoring it basically swung the game. So the Absolutely. handshake happens. 
Uh, you were unfortunately wrong in your prediction. I was wrong. Uh, you were right that the game did go to scenario, but it did go to to Mark instead of it of did. Jane. Yep. And 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 I think both players played really well in in terms of like taking out the different models involved. But I think that that Makeda three play was the the whole turning point. It was well. It was a turning. It point. was. It was like the, <laughs> the sorry the last turning point. It's it's yeah correct. It's it's. Yeah. One of the one of the big questions with it, I think, is if we. One of the turning points was Jaden committed his yeah. Hydra and the Siege Animatrix to take out the Storm Raptor, and then lost, and then lost lost well, both both of them. of them without feet up, right? Right, and so, so that was also, I, I think, a really big yeah. turning point in the game. Yeah, it was, and that that last decision. So, but I mean, it was a really good, well game, uh, well played game. So we know that Mark's going to move on to the finals of the World Championship. Yeah, and, and it looked like the, the other round was still going on. We're not sure yet who's going to be in the finals with them. Yeah, so hanging out. So uh, stay tuned. We'll be back with the IG World Finals game here shortly, probably within maybe an hour or so. As soon as that other game wraps up, we get the players seated, give them a little bit of a breather. Once they sit down and get able to play, uh, we'll have that. It'll be Jay and I again commentating awesome. the World Finals. High five. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you all later. Till then, take it easy. See you.